Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video of C++ for beginners. And this video is going to be sort of a continuation to my previous video in which I showed you how you can draw rectangle shape using C++. And in this video I want to show you how you can draw triangle and reversed triangle shapes using C++ as well. So if you are not familiar with how you can draw rectangle, I would suggest you to watch that video first. I'm going to link it here because in my opinion it is a bit more difficult to draw triangle than it is to draw uh, rectangle shapes. So one more thing, I have also created Instagram and Twitter accounts, so if you are interested in how developer life looks like and also if you are interested in behind the scenes of these videos that I post on YouTube, make sure to follow me on my other social media, so at True Code Beauty. Instagram and Twitter accounts, I'm going to put the link to those in the description of this video. So without further ado, let's start drawing our triangle shape. So here I have the shape that we are going to draw in this video, and that is going to be this equilateral triangle shape that I have here. And there is a couple of things that I want to explain before we start to write code. The first thing is going to be that this height our user really has to enter this height, so we are going to let our user decide how many of these symbols are going to be on this side, and this side, and this side as well. And the second thing is going to be that our user defines this symbol, so whichever symbol our user wants to use in order to draw this shape, we are going to use that symbol that he enters. Those are two things that we need from our user, and then it is up to us to really think and figure out the algorithm that we are going to use in order to draw this triangle shape here. So let me explain to you how we are going to do that. So we are going to have two for loops, and those are going to be nested for loops. So if you are not familiar with for loop nesting, I am going to link my video on that here, so make sure to watch it. So our outer for loop is the one that is going to control this height of a triangle. So in this particular case, it is going to have five iterations, one, two, three, four, five. And then our inner for loop is the one that is going to control the width of this triangle. And if you really look at this triangle, you can notice that our outer for loop really goes from one up to the number that our user has entered. So it has five iterations in this particular case because our user has entered five for the length of this triangle, so for the length of its sides. So that is the behavior of our outer for loop, it goes from one up to five in this particular case, and then the behavior of our inner for loop is going to be the following. So in the first iteration of our outer for loop, our inner for loop has only one iteration. After that, in the second iteration of outer for loop, inner for loop has two iterations, then in the third iteration of outer for loop, inner for loop has three, in a fourth iteration of outer for loop, inner for loop has four, and so on. So that means that our inner for loop goes from one up to the current value of the counter of outer for loop. So let's translate that into our C++ code. Let me return this picture here. Okay, so before we start to write that algorithm, I am going to create a variable which is going to hold the length that our user enters, so I'm going to call that variable length, okay, and then let's write out a message to the user so that he knows that he should enter length, like this, and let's store the value in our length variable, so that is the first thing that we need from our user. And then the second thing is going to be a symbol, so that is going to be of type char, like this. So I'm going to write out, oh, C out symbol, like this, so that our user knows that we should enter symbol as well. And let's store that symbol in our symbol variable. So after we have acquired these two things from our user, let's translate the algorithm that I just explained into C++ code. So as I said, we are going to have two for loops, outer for loop, 
which is going to have counter that I'm going to call, let's say, I. And that outer for loop, its counter goes from 1 up to the value that our user has entered, and it increases by 1 in each iteration. Okay, so I'm going to say I is equal to 1. And then i is, equal, i is less than or equal to length, so the length that our user has entered. And then please increment that i in each iteration. So that is going to be outer for loop. And then inner for loop is going to go from 1 up to the current value of outer for loop's counter. So in the first iteration, it is going to execute only once, so it is going to have only one iteration. In the second iteration of outer for loop, it is going to execute twice. In the third, it is going to execute three times, four times, five times. So how we are going to write that? We are going to say for int, and then our inner for loops counter, I'm going to call j. And j goes from one up to the value of our i, so up to the value of outer for loops counter. And it increases by one as well in each iteration. And in each iteration, it has to write out this symbol that our user has entered. So let's say C out symbol, like this. Okay, and then there is one more thing that I want to explain, and that is going to be after each iteration of outer for loop, really the next iteration starts in a new line. So we are going to write that here, here, I'm sorry. So at the end of our for loop, our outer for loop, we are going to say C out end line. Okay, and now if I run this program, it asks for length, I'm going to say that length is, let's say, 5, and then symbol is going to be star symbol, and as you can see, it has really written out a triangle that has the length 5 of these symbols that our user has entered. And there is one more thing that I want to do in order to format this shape here to be a bit prettier, and that is going to be really to add a function here which is going to assign to each of these symbols that our user enters so that our for loop writes out a width of two fields and that is going to be done using a function that is called set w meaning set width and this function here is going to give the space of two fields to the symbol that comes after it and in order to use this function here, we have to include its library, and that is going to be iomanip library. So I'm going to say include, like this, iomanip. Oh, okay. And now this underline has went away. So if I run my program once more, and I enter, let's say, for length 6, and then for symbol, I enter this this symbol here. As you can see, our triangle shape looks better now. So it has the height, or actually the length, of six of these symbols that our user has entered, and it has also used this symbol here in order to draw this triangle shape. And there is one more thing that I want to show you. So at the beginning of this video, I promised that I'm going to teach you how you can draw triangle shape, and then reversed triangle shape as well. So there is one very beautiful thing about programming and that is going to be code reusability and about real code reusability you are going to learn when we learn about classes and functions and when I make my videos on functions I'm going to link that video here so make sure to watch it because functions really are one of the most important things that you have to understand not only for C++ programming but for programming in general. So make sure to watch that video. And let's say that for now we are only going to really adjust this code here. So we are going to modify it a little bit in order to draw this shape here. So if you look at these two shapes, you can really notice similarities. And what are those? So this inner for loop behaves about the same in both of these triangles. 
but there is one key difference and that is going to be that in this triangle shape our outer for a loop counts from 1 to 5 and then in this reverse triangle our outer for a loop really counts from 5 to 1 so if we modify that we are going to have this reversed triangle so let me move these and then I'm going to really copy this here so I'm going to use Control C and then Control V and then let's really add a couple of end lines between these two okay like this and then let's really modify this triangle shape that we have just explained and drawn and as you could see on this image here our outer for loop counts from 5 to 1 which means from the size that our user has entered from 1 so that means that if we change our outer for loop we should get that reverse triangle shape so it goes from length like this and it really goes while our i is greater than or equal to 1 and then our i decreases in each iteration so it decrements and then now if i run my program it asks me for length let's say that length is going to be 5 and then symbol is going to be let's say this plus symbol and when i pressed enter we have gotten both of these triangle shapes so this one that we have drawn first and then this reversed triangle shape as well i hope that now you have really seen the real beauty of programming you learn some basics and then you can use those basics in the most creative ways that you can think of so i hope that you liked this video if you did make sure to subscribe to my channel click the bell icon as well so that you are notified when i publish my next video and a lot more great videos are coming and also like this video follow me on my other social media so instagram and twitter profiles in order to see a little bit of behind the scenes of these videos and also in order to have a perspective on how developer life really looks like and thanks for watching i'm going to see you in my next video bye